Hey everyone, my name is Jordan Stark. I am a senior at Michigan State University and am part of the College of Education. Teaching has always been a very present force in my life. From being the oldest of four siblings to being a camp counselor for middle schoolers since the age of 14, and most, notice, most notably, having a mom who was a teacher, I was always aware of the struggles and rewards of leading and instruction due to both living it and observing it. Like I mentioned, my mom, as well as my grandma, both got their degrees in education. Due to this, I never had a dull moment with either of them. Each opportunity for me in my childhood would be a teaching opportunity for me. What both my mom and my grandma stressed, however, was what my input was. Before asking a question or trying to tell me what something was, they would ask me questions based on my prior knowledge. Such as, what are my opinions on this particular subject, or what do I know previously about this particular subject. My engagement and my prior thoughts fueled how I learned. While I won't ever say that I've never been on the receiving end of a lecture from my parents, I will say that my mom would make sure that anything I learn or absorb would have my opinions and voices heard, so that that would lead me to any conclusions that I may draw or any analysis from the lesson that my mom or grandma is trying to teach me. As I begin my third year of service learning, these ideals pass with me into my classrooms. I firmly believe that all future students that I have will learn the importance of participation in class-driven thought. I merely want to be an instigator of discussion in my classrooms. I want to hear what students have to say or think about subjects as I bring them up. Education is supposed to be a democratic affair, and most believe that education is the gateway for model citizenship. I want my classroom to emulate that idea by showing the importance of a democratic voice. My dream classroom is a current events class where all I do is teach students how to engage in news, question it, learn it, and be able to debate it and analyze it. And while I realize that it is a pipe dream, I hope that one day it can become a reality. In all of my high school teaching experience, what perhaps best describes my drive for teaching was my AP European History class taken when I was a senior in high school. The class was entirely focused on student engagement and discussion. Numerous times when we discussed DBQs or other essays, my teacher, Mr. Bannock, would pick students in pairs and send us up to the board, where a projection of documents were and we would have to explain how each document or piece of evidence was significant and how it could be used in an essay. It helped me learn how to speak critically and present information analytically, as well as it helped me get over my fear of presenting and being wrong in front of a group of people, as that would only lead to more discussion and better content information absorption. Having a peer tell you the importance of this document made it a whole lot easier to see why it was wrong rather than have a teacher tell you why you were wrong. The year ended in one of the most chaotic ways I've ever seen a classroom be. After the AP test and during the final week of school, Mr. Bannock put up 15 historical events, inventions, and people from European history up on the board and told us simply to rank the top 10. First, we were told to make our list by ourselves, which was already a struggle as each student had three textbooks and a two semesters worth of information just to cram really quickly into a 50 minute period and make a top 10 list. On the next day, we were grouped with four other people into groups of four and tried to make a consensus for what the top 10 was. That turned out to be a huge challenge because every student who is every student who has been in the class each had their own opinion and each had their own way of interpreting these 15 events, inventions, and people, and each had their own idea as to which one was more important than the other. Eventually, at the end of the class, each group was able to make a top 10. You could probably see where this is leading. On the third day, each group had to put up their top 10 list, see the other group's top 10 lists, and then argue to create a class-wide top 10 list and see what items were important. It was pandemonium. The, Mr. Bannock just stood back in his chair, put his feet up, put his head back, and watched all of us argue and figure it out on our own. The class started with 26 people at the beginning of the year, but dwindled down to 20, so we were all pretty close and knew how to feed off each other's energies. We argued, 
consolidated, allowed everyone to speak up on an issue. And over the end of those three days, we were able to come up with a list that we all agreed with. The reason that I chose this story to talk about is that it perfectly encapsulates what I want in a classroom. I want to direct a room where students will engage themselves critically and will be able to drive each other. Having students compete with each other creates engagement, but having kids explain and argue this just creates not only understanding, but analytical skills that can be used in everyday situations. Having a kid explain why the Gutenberg printing press was more important than John Locke's treatise on government, even though they probably aren't related in any way, shape, or form other than they're in the scope of European history, just shows how students can both learn and analyze and then debate it with their other peers. And that is exactly what I want in the classroom. The most common tool that I'll use in the classroom is a Socratic seminar. Opening up the floor and generating familiarity between students will create an atmosphere that will drive interaction and participation. The first couple times in the classroom I do this will probably be focused on lighthearted subjects. What do you think of last night's episode of Blank? What can the team do better to reach the playoffs, etc. Once I start getting more into my units though, and this familiarity between students is cemented, I'll eventually choose subjects that focus more on history. Sheg.stanford.edu is easily one of the best websites to not only find resources on a variety of these lessons, but also give sample subjects for which they have a Socratic seminar about. Having students read Hammurabi's Code and explain if it's a conservative or breakthrough document of its time is one example I can think of. What makes me love social studies is the variety of subjects that it encompasses. Economics, politics, history, current events. What makes me love social studies even more is the possibility of discussion and how it opens up on these subjects. So to be able to have a textbook and subject be able to iterate all of these and open it up to debate is a complete blessing. There isn't any perfect textbook, but my absolutely favorite one so far in my educational process has been the landmark Thucydides. It tells the story of the Second Peloponnesian War, and it is written by the Greek historian Thucydides. It talks about the war between Sparta and all of its allies, and Athens and all of its city-state allies, and the encompassing war between them. What makes it significant is that it describes life to an intricate detail of Athenian and Spartan life, and it shows a clear-cut view of conservatism versus liberalism of the time, and how society changes, all the while talking about ancient warfare. It's a heavy content book, and has an assortment of proper nouns that would be difficult for anyone to absorb, but if directed properly, can easily be used to connect past events of thousands of years ago to politics and economics of today. I want to be a teacher that students don't feel bored with. I want to be the teacher that students can talk to after school. But most importantly, I want to be a teacher that students don't feel limited with. Commanding a student to learn isn't the point of being a teacher, but compelling students to want to learn is the mark of a successful teacher, and ultimately, it's what I want to do.